In this video, we will discuss the problem that is product array puzzle. The problem says that we'll be given an array and we have to return a resultant array where the resultant at the ith index will be consisting of the product of all the elements of the array except the element at the ith index here. So let us have a look at the sample test case to understand the problem better. In this particular problem, if you will observe, so the very first element that we have is 10. So at this particular index, we have to multiply the product of all the elements except this particular element. So you can see when I'll multiply all the other elements except this element, then this is the product. So 3 into 5 into 6 into 2, it is going to be 180. Then after this, what will happen is at the next index, I have got the element 3. So except the element 3, I need to multiply all the other elements here like this. Then after this, Next, for the element uh, 5, except the element 5, we need to multiply all the other elements of the array and print the product or store the product at this index. Okay, then after that, for the next element, that is 6, except this element, we need to take the product of all the other elements and multiply them. So, except 6, we'll multiply all the other elements and store the product at this particular index here. So, the product will be 300. Because you can see all these elements when you take the product, 3 into 5 will be 15, 15 into 2 will be 30 and 30 into 10 will be 300 here. Okay. Then after this for the last element here, we'll multiply the product of all the other elements that are here. And you can see the answer stored will be 900 here. How can we do this particular uh, question? So in order to solve this question, what we can do is we can apply nested approach. What I can basically do is if I am at the ith index, so I can run a J loop, which can start like which can start from the beginning of the array and except when the value of I and J are same, I'll multiply the Jth element in the result. So basically, initially my result of i would be equal to 1 and when the i and j are not the same, then I'll multiply the jth element in the result. So basically, when my j will be here, j will be here, j will be here and j will be here, all these elements will be multiplied in my result here because initially my i was here. So except this index element, I'll multiply all the other elements in the result here and at the result of 0, what will get stored? 180 is going to get stored. Then after this, what will happen? In the next uh, iteration, when my I will proceed further and I will be standing at this particular index here, that is index 1, then my J will start from here since the I and J index are not same. So 10 will get multiplied in the result. Then my J will be here since I and J are same. So I'll skip this index. Then my J will be here since they are not the same. So I'll multiply it. Then after that, J will be here since they are not the same. I and J are not the same. So I'll multiply this element. Then my J will be here. I and J are not the same. So I'll multiply this element as well. So the total product that you will get here is nothing but 60 because 6 in, uh, 600 because uh, 5 into 6 into 2 will be 60. 60 into 10 will be 600. So at the index 1, result of 1 will be storing what? It will be storing 600 here. So this is what I can do. Basically, I can run nested loop. If I'm at the ith index, I'll start my j from 0 until the uh, length of the array. And whenever my ith and jth index are not the same, then I'll keep on multiplying those jth element in the result here. Initially, my result of i for every index will be updated as 1 so that I can take the products accordingly. Okay, but this will take order of n square time because for every index i, I am planning to iterate throughout the array. So let us discuss the code implementation for this particular approach here. You can see what I'll be doing is first of all, I'll declare uh, n that is the length of the array. Then after this initially we'll mark every index with the value as one because we want to take the product. So we need to initialize the resultant list with the value as one initially. Then whenever I'm iterating for the ith index, what I'll do is I'll run my j loop from zero till the end index of the array till the last index of the array. And if my i is not equal to j then in the result of i i'll multiply the jth element here so as i said if i'm at a particular ith index okay and my j keeps on moving like this so whenever the j is not the same as i i'll uh, i'll keep on multiplying all such indexes inside the result here because all those indexes need to be included in the product for the ith index except when i and j are same here and at the end of the day we'll return the resultant array 
Now, in terms of time complexity, this will be very costly because the time complexity of my approach is going to be order of n square since I am using two nested loops, one inside the other. And the space complexity of my code, if you consider that, that I am returning the resultant array, then it is going to be order of n if you consider the resultant space array that I am returning here. Okay. Apart from that, I am not taking any extra space uh, in terms of any data structure. Okay, can we do it a little more optimally? Yes, we can use the prefix and the suffix product approach to do things in a better way. What I can do here is basically I can say that if I am at the ith index, so basically prefix of i will be storing what? Prefix of i will be storing the product of all the elements before the ith index. Okay, so if you will say that prefix of i is there, so it is going to store the product of all the elements starting from the 0th index till the i minus 1th index that is what we are going to do here and uh, similarly what will happen is if you see so suffix of i will be there and suffix of i will do what suffix of i will store the product of all the elements from the i plus 1th index of the array till the last element of the array now whenever i am at an ith index what will happen here now if i want to calculate my result so my result of i would be equal to what it would be equal to prefix of i into the suffix of i why because because in this case you can see prefix of i is, is storing the product of all the elements just before the ith index and the suffix of i will be storing the product of all the elements after the ith index so except the ith index we will be able to multiply the product of all the other elements here okay let's see how this will get updated initially what will happen is initially you will update the prefix of 0 as 1 so we'll have the value as 1 here then at the next index you will multiply the previous element so you'll have 10 here because at this index you want the product till the previous index so you'll have 10 here then at the next index you will have what you will have the element that is 30 because the total product will be 30 now then at the next place you will have 150 then at the next place what will you have you will have uh, 15 uh, uh, into 6 so this is going to be 0 6 5 the 30 0 3 and this is going to be 900 here so i'll place the value 900 here okay then after this uh what will happen is if you will observe here what are we doing initially we are updating the prefix of 0 as 1 okay because at the 0th index there is no element before it so there will be no product as such so we need to update the value as uh, 1 only then as i said the prefix of i will be what it will be basically the product of the previous element multiplied with the prefix of i minus 1 now prefix of i minus 1 will do what it will it will consist of the product of all the elements from the 0th index of the array till the i minus 2th index of the array because if prefix of i is going to store the product of all the elements from 0 till i minus 1 then prefix of i minus 1 will store the product of all the elements from 0 till i minus so prefix of i minus 1 will store the product of all the elements from 0 till i minus 2 here. So I can derive the relation that prefix of i is going to be equal to ARR of i minus 1 that is the previous element into the product of all the elements from 0 till i minus 2th index that is prefix of i minus 1 here. Okay, and this is how my prefix array would get updated. Now, after that, talking about the suffix array, so initially at the end, you will update what? You are going to update nothing but 1 here. Then after this, the next value that you will have is 2 here. Then after this, you will have the next value as 12. Then after this, you will have, uh, so you can see we are having 2, then 12. Then after this, you will have the next value 12, 5 is a 60. Okay, then after this, you are going to have the value as 180. So what am I doing? Initially, I am updating the suffix at the last index as what? As 1. Then after this, as I said, the suffix of i will be equal to what? The suffix of i is the product of product of all the elements from the i plus 1th index uh, till the end. So I can say that it can be also said as i plus 2 up till ar of n minus 1. Now I can say that this can be considered as suffix of i plus 2 here because uh, suffix of i will be what? It is the product of all the elements uh, starting from i plus 1th index till the end. So I can multiply a r of i into suffix of i plus uh, 1 here. Suffix of i plus 1 will consist of what? It will consist of the product of all the elements from the i plus 2th index till the end of the array here. So it will consist of all these products. Okay. So this is how I can generate my prefix and suffix array. Once I am done with this, then my resultant at the ith index would be equal to 
prefix of i into suffix of i because prefix of i is going to consist of the product of all the elements from the 0th index till the i minus 1th index and the suffix of i is going to consist of the product of all the elements from i plus 1th index till the last index of the array. So in this case, the resultant of i will be what? It will be the prefix of i that is product of all elements before the ith index and suffix of i that is product of all the elements after the ith index. So in this case, ith index is not included in the result of i here. That is what we wanted. So what will happen here? Let's see the updated values. Obviously, you will update the value 180 here. Then you will update the value 600 here. Then after this, the value updated here will be what? It will be 0, then uh, 6 and then 3. So it will be 360, I guess. Then this will be 300 and this will be 900 here. So basically, I am multiplying the prefix of i into suffix of i for calculating the result of i. Let's see the values here. 180, 600. So let's compare it. Uh, we have 180, then 6. 600, then 360, 300 and 900. So 300, 360, 300 and 900. So we have calculated this correctly. In this approach, you can see that we have used the prefix product and the suffix product approach here. Okay. And we are using extra spaces for storing the prefix and the suffix array. That is the only extra space that we are using. Let's have a look at the code here. You can see initially I'll take the length of the array here. Then after that, I have initialized my prefix product array with one value suffix product array with one value initially the resultant is updated with zero because uh, like maybe if you have zero elements then the then the products might be zero also now after this the prefix product at the ith index will be equal to arr of i minus one into the prefix of i minus one that is what we had discussed already and the suffix will be what initially you will see that the last index will be having the value one and then the suffix at the index will be equal to the element at the j plus oneth index into the j plus one suffix value okay then after this is done then the result of i will be prefix product of i that is the product of all the elements before the ith index into the product of all the elements after the ith index so this uh, makes sure that the result of i will be storing the uh, product of all the elements except the ith element itself at the end of the day we'll return the resultant array here now what is the time complexity of this approach if you see we are taking order of n plus order of n plus order of n time complexity that is overall order of n only firstly we are calculating the prefix product then we are calculating the suffix product then after that we are calculating the final result here the space complexity would be how much if you see here so i'm taking order of n space for the prefix array order of n space for the suffix array plus order of n space for the resultant array if you want to consider it as the extra space that we are paying for so overall here we are taking order of n extra space for the prefix and the suffix array which is the main space that we are taking for the extra array data structure that we have declared here. Now, can we do this more optimally? Yes, we can do this more optimally by observing some cases here. What we can do is in the optimal approach, we can calculate the product of the array. Now, what do I mean by this? If you see here, suppose if I do one iteration and I'm able to calculate the product of the array, then the result of i would be what in general if the whole array does not consist of any zeros then in that case the result resultant value at the ith index will be the product of the whole array divided by the arr of i divided by the element at that index because except the element at that index i want the product of all the elements here now let's uh, see the sample test case here suppose if i have got the test case that is 5 uh, 3 and 2 now what is the product going to be product will be equal to nothing but 30 here correct now at this index we'll update what we'll update 30 by 5 here at this index we'll update what we'll update 30 by 3 here at this index we'll update what we'll update 30 by 2 here basically the product of the whole array divided by the element at that index now the result would look like what in this case if you'll observe here the result will be nothing but 6 here the result will be nothing but what 10 and here the result will be nothing but 15 here so this is how you'll update the result basically the result at the ith index will be product of the whole array divided by the element at the ith index because in the resultant of i we do not want the ith element to be included in the product here okay this is the very first case when the array has got no zero but what if the array has got only one zero suppose there is only one zero in the array then what will happen here then at all the other indexes you will be having the value as what then at all the other if you have got single zero in the array 
then what will happen? All the other indexes will be having the value as zero. All the other indexes will be having the product as zero because if you see here for this particular index, you will multiply all these elements. So the pro so zero will get multiplied. The product will become zero. Okay. Similarly, if you want to update the value at this index, so you'll multiply all these elements and the product will be zero because you're multiplying with a zero. Similarly, at the starting index also, why will you get a zero here? Because when you will multiply all these elements, you will get zero in the product. So when when you have a single zero then what will happen here is you will get a like you will get all the other elements as zero and you will store that index you will store that index let's say idx that that is having the zero value so here in my case the index 2 is having the value as zero so at this particular index you will update the product of the other elements of the array that are not zero because at this particular index you can multiply all the other elements that is uh, 3 7 and 2 here so what will be the product in this case at this particular index you will get the product as 14 into 3 which is going to be what uh, let's say 14 into 3 3 4 are 12 42 so i'll update the value as 42 in this particular case i hope you have understood this if i uh, if the array has got a single zero so except that index where you find the zero all the other indexes will be updated with the value as zero in the resultant array and the index that has got the value zero this value will not be included in the multiplication of the result for this index so all the other elements product will be taken so 3 7 and 2 will be taken in the product so you'll get 42 here i hope you are clear with this okay now there's one more case when the array has got more than one zero if the array has got more than one zero then what we should do then the product of all the indexes will be zero because if the array has got more than one zero so at this index what will be the result the result will be uh, the product of all these elements so you can understand this will be zero okay then after this if the array has uh, like uh, after this when you want to update this index so you'll multiply all these elements again you have got zero multiplied in the product so you'll update zero here then at this index also you'll have zero at this index also you'll have zero because you'll multiply all these elements here now so this is why when you have more than one zero in the array then the whole result will be having the value zero so you update zero at all the indexes of the result these are the three cases that you need to take care of take care of first case is if the array has got no zero then the result of i will be the product of the whole array divided by the element at that index so that you can exclude the element at that index in the result then after this if the array has got only one zero so all the other indexes uh, will have the value zero and only the index at which you had found zero it will consist of the product of all the non-zero elements here and if the array has got more than one zero then the whole result will be zero these are the cases that you need to take care of let's have a look at the code here now if you see the code here uh, this is very simple initially we have uh, maintained a zero variable which will count the number of zeros index is minus one it will in it will it is there to store the index if there is only exactly one zero and the product is initially one so i'm iterating and wherever i find a zero element i'll store the index uh, the at which i have found the zero element and i'll increase the count of zeros here otherwise if the element is non-zero i'll multiply in the product variable and initially i have declared my resultant array with the zero value so initially the resultant array is having all the values as zero now suppose there is no zero if there is no zero in the whole array then in that case what we need to do in that case the result of i will be nothing but the product of the whole array divided by the element at that index because we want to update the result of i with the product of all the elements except the ith element that is there at that index if there is only one zero then the whole array will uh, have zero value but the index that has got zero it will be uh, equal to the product of all the non-zero elements and if there are more than more than one zeros then the result is already containing of zeros then you will return the result which might be consisting of zeros so in this case we can resolve the uh, return the result at the end this is very simple if you see the time complexity of my code now so the time complexity will be basically order of n plus order of n in the worst case which is linear only and if you see the space complexity so i'm not using any extra space apart from the resultant array so you can say that i'm using order of n space for the resultant array only and that is mandatory because i need to return the resultant array so i cannot reduce this space apart from that i'm not using any extra space for doing any other thing or for taking any other extra data structure now this problem was asked in flipkart and amazon i hope you are clear with this problem so far let's try and submit this problem now
So we have written the code. Let's submit the problem and see if the problem gets accepted or not. I hope it should get accepted. So you can clearly see that my code was able to pass all the test cases. I hope you have understood this problem clearly. Make sure to comment understood and thank you for watching this video.